Now we're back on the Brazu Loop and one of my favorite bridges. Morning of uh, day four. Had a good night's sleep. Uh, I went to bed, we all went to bed late. Went to bed at about 11.30. And then the first time I woke up was actually at 3.30, so it was a long stretch. Then I had a weird event. I woke up again at 4 or something like that. And I felt something going across the top of my head. And then it was like a mouse. And I thought, ah, oh, shucks, I got a mouse inside my tent. But, so I turned on my flashlight and I looked and I'll check again. But last night I couldn't see any holes and I don't think there was one inside the tent. I think what happened is that... You know, the tent is so small and my head is basically resting against the, the, the mesh and I think that the mouse actually ran across the mesh kind of thing, so. But I'll go check later. Anyways, morning of day four. We all our wood last night, I thought. Let's keep some to start the fire, so. Nobody else is up yet. so much windfall in here that I want to salvage some timbers. I'll strip the bark off of these. There's the bark pile. Nah. Once they're dry, they'll come back and split them, turn them into planks, use that for picnic tables. Eric's tent. Not sure whose tent that is. Mine. Randy and ladies, a couple of Americans, I'm not sure who they are. Walk back here and show you some of the devastation, what a strong wind can do, what, what we refer to as windfall. So sometimes you hit a trail and there's trees down everywhere and it's almost impassable. Well, that's called windfall because a big windstorm comes in. Snap right there like a twig. Same with that one. So, and then there's two more over there, but that's nothing. You start walking and you come across, you know, look at that tree. Oh, by the way, that's the outhouse. So I'm just in the back behind the campsite, but. Then you get stuff like this. When you get one of the bigger trees falls and then knocks all the other ones down. So when you get something like this, you get a complete mess. I mean, if you're on the trail trying to hike, you can't get through that. So you gotta go around. Because there's this one that's pushing on it. Look at the jumble of trees. That one's arched over. Just snapped. Huh? No, it's all wet. Wasn't a dead tree. But just snapped. Well, the good news about this is it provides material to rebuild some of the picnic tables and stuff like that without having to cut live trees. The trees were already done. Nature took care of that. And the other good news is there's fires allowed here. There's plenty of firewood, but now there's a lot of firewood. So, and I'm sure as the trail crew comes in here to work this up, they'll buck some of this up. That, you know, for you folks that are not familiar with logging terms, bucking it up is when you cut it in, um, in about foot long uh, pieces. And then all that'll be necessary after that is to chop it up. So, thing to remember, or for anybody who's thinking of coming here uh, next year in particular, so this is 2019. If you're coming here summer 2020, make sure you bring an axe and uh, it'll be worth it because you'll have firewood. Well, and you can make fires all through this trail. Or don't bring an axe, I never bring one. This is what I refer to as bucked up. So I was just back in there. So the crews that are coming and clearing up, if they're already here with chainsaws and cutting trees to clear the path, Sometimes they'll take an extra couple of seconds and buck it up, buck it up. 
bucket up, 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 and then leave little pieces all over the place. So now if you, if you come with an ax and you split that, you get about 16, 17 pieces out of that. And once it's dry next year, you can make a fire that'll last a long time with 16 pieces of wood. Different for breakfast this morning. I'm gonna do. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna some. throw a few twigs in there and hopefully get some heat under there. If we're trying to cut that thing down. All right. I know this isn't burning very well. So I'm doing something different for breakfast this morning. I'm doing cereal. And uh, step one is I brought some powdered milk. The ratio is four to one. Make sure I've got a spoon first. Got a little spoon. Gotta be very precise. Just kidding. Put that in there. Basically making a cup of milk. It's just like home. So Randy's trying to have breakfast. So what's it look like? Oh, lots of eggs. Wow, it really does look Ham, like uh, cheese, and it reconstitutes pretty darn good. Really good, yeah. Awesome. All right. So, but you don't think she doesn't sell at a store? So you go online, buy it online from her, probably. Or if you happen to be in Drayton Valley, you can go to her place and buy it from yeah, her. Yeah, you just have to give her a call. And yeah. If she's home. She'll. So you should probably make a custom order if you said you're going on a big trip with six people and I'm sure she would, yeah. yeah that's awesome cool. here's brazoo lake too bad we didn't hear the loons last night oh there's there's the mom with her little chicks yeah i think this is definitely a pack rafting destination check this out so the outlet is over there paddle up in there paddle all the way to the headwaters way over there I'll walk around the point here see how far and there's got to be cutthroats or there's definitely minnows I'll show you in a second there's minnows there or yeah so we came down from that valley there's a creek there we stopped there yesterday so if I came with the pack raft I could go down and put the raft inflate and then paddle all the way back to the camp and do some fishing this has potential big moose big moose people can see the bear track right there right there right there Ooh, he's big and then there's a moose track. Holy, look at the bear track here. Wow. One, two, three, four, five prints in.
your last name? Coleman is my last yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. So, right on. Got, All right, man. Well, it's good seeing you. I wish I almost good. felt like going the other way and backtracking, but that would be boring. We're not going to backtrack, so. <laughs> Look for yourself on the video. You'll be, uh, you'll be featured, Tanya. <laughs> All right, Roseanne, you have no choice now. You'll have to be a subscriber because you're going to be famous. You're going to be in this video. I'll become a subscriber. Yeah, all right. Good, <laughs> nice to meet good you, seeing buddy. you. If you guys want to relive this trip, just look for, just Google anything to do with Jasper. You can Google the word, uh, go to YouTube and you can Google. Uh, oh, it looks like a big windstorm went through here and we're lucky because people are telling us that going through here three weeks ago, was a bit of an ordeal and now three weeks later look at all the all the cutting the wardens came through here and or park crew and cut all of this nice yeah this section would have taken 15 minutes to do well that's my answer right there that's some um, pretty serious rapids i mean you come around that you got that rock and that tree to deal with then right there yeah i think a pack raft on the lake is doable but floating the north fork of the brazu is eh, not maybe not me maybe you ben but not me This would be raftable. I love this bridge. I absolutely, this is a work of art, this bridge. Okay, so officially, uh, so they don't even advertise. They don't even tell you what, oh, there's a sign there, maybe. A right campground. So I think there is, yeah. We need to walk down that way just a wee bit, so you're officially going down the uh, south boundary. South trail. boundary yeah, trail. Part of the fun. I do feel like a guide. No, no, leave it open. Leave it open. I do feel like a guide because I remember. I mean, Eric here is getting a guided tour, and he's getting to see things that most people, most people doing the Brazu Loop, come up cross that bridge just there and then head over to Brazu Lake not knowing that a mere 400 yards away is this cabin I can't remember what this one's called I don't know if it's we'll see in a minute like this is really what it's like to you know I've always said imagine imagine 50 years ago or 100 years ago and you're a pioneer and you you just walk in you walk your, your nearest neighbor is 30 kilometers away and you just walk up, hey John, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. That's not the same thing. Let's do a little more back on the get up top. So he's got an electric fence. For the horses? No, just to keep whatever out. No. All right. That was our side trip to the south boundary. 
Now we're back on the Brazu Loop and one of my favorite bridges. This qualifies as ugly. Yeah, I mean, you got no view. You're camping here in the trees. You have no view. It's just that if you're doing if you're doing the pure south boundary and you're coming off of a rate which is 10 kilometers and Wolverine is 10 and this is in between. But if I was doing the south boundary and I happened to end here at the end of the day, I'd put in the extra 2K and go to Brazu Lake. Got it. Why is it there always? People just pick them up on the people pick them up. Different scenery again. We're following the Brazu River. But what's interesting is right now the Brazu River is flowing in the same direction as us. And then at some point it has to change direction. And I think Boulder Creek dumps into the Braz. I'm not sure, we'll see it up ahead, but for now. Or maybe this river alongside us is already the boulder. We'll see in a minute when we get to a canyon up ahead. Not doing this river. Interesting place for a break. Could have picked something less steep, but... I'd like a wall like this in my backyard too. That'd be sweet. And then have a fire pit at the base. Oh, that'd be super sweet. Got water going for a cup of soup, but more importantly, I get my oysters. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. What do you got going? Got me some uh, chicken ramen. Mr. Noodle. Mr. Noodles. Mr. Noodles chicken. Good lunch. Nice spot for lunch.
¿eh? Here's the bridge. Warden's cabin on the other side in the campground. I saw something and I wondered. And then we can get on a map and see where this was and know precisely where we were standing. Cataract or there's Nigel just over there. Pretty cool. I'm walking by and I just I literally saw that ring and I wondered is that a fire ring and then you see right there something so we walked over and it's a survey marker. I don't think we missed it. More cabins. Four points. Wow, we did good time. This says Brazu 16K. We've done 18 this morning already. And this is the Jonas cutoff. So four points is 100. I don't know what Camp Parker is. Yeah, Jonas shoulder, Jonas cutoff. Well, we got a four points at 4.30, chatted with some of the folks there, and then made the decision to carry on to Boulder and shave uh, three kilometers tomorrow. Besides, we, there's prettier views at Boulder, and uh, so that's where we're going tonight, Max. Boulder. Max? Yeah. I'm Marty. Nice to, nice meet, to meet you. So Max just recognized me. <laughs> this is Eric. I'm Eric. Nice to From you. Philadelphia, eh? Yeah, Philadelphia. Right on. My wife, Kelly, my daughter, Ava, and my son, Nolan. And where are you guys off to today? Uh, uh, four points. Four points. Four points. Hopefully there's a spot mm -hmm. there. We don't John, so you've been doing the GDT as well for how long now? Since? Uh, it's four weeks tomorrow. Four weeks tomorrow. Okay, so... Um, Awesome. So we've and and the other guy in front that we didn't talk to is also a GDT uh, true hiker. I yeah. Think he's called Jackson. I've only met him in the last. And you're from days, New so. Zealand, or? 
I no? am from the UK, but I'm living in Australia. Right oh, okay. All right. So we've met a few uh, through hikers this year. It's good to know. This bridge has seen better days. Not the prettiest campsite, but it shaves three kilometers off tomorrow morning's trip. So home is home and I'm tired right now. All right, now Eric's turn. Everybody's got a different technique. Get it going. Oh, and before I burn myself. Whose garbage is that? Somebody's that you found on the trail because you're a good yeah. Samaritan? That's awesome. That was mine. That was in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's hope that gets going. I should. I put a little few chunks down inside there. Wow, that stuff burns good. Somebody left some wood back there. There was This was left behind. And I went and cut these. They're not very big, but they'll last all night. Our last night on the trail. Woohoo! Well, no, that's kind of a sad thing. That's no, well, our last night on this trail. Yeah. All right, last night of the trip. Ooh, that fire is going good behind me. So, uh, we're just boiling water in the fire. So I'm gonna have a fettuccine, uh, 600 calories, a Nutri-Grain bar. I didn't use my drink during the day, but that looks like that would have been good. Raspberry ice, nice. Hot chocolate with the coffee before in the bed. And maybe I'll start after, once I get the water boiling, I'll have this tea first. So my, my, my evening dinner, nothing fancy today. Two cups of water, stir it up good so that all the stuff that makes the cream. Alpine air food. Oh, it's not that great. My incorrect thing, there's a creek just down here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, it's closer that way. Uh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Got some water. Just put up my tent. I was explaining to Eric earlier, you just cut the top of the bag. You don't need these. I always see everybody with these high spoons because you need a high spoon to get into the bottom of the bag. Just cut the top of the bag off. It's actually, it's actually quite good. Very good. Anything warm at the end of the day. Sophisticated and good. Mental note, the uh, Alpine Air uh, Leonardo Fettuccini, whatever the heck it's called, was actually pretty good. It's Call it, call it a fancy uh, mac and cheese kind of thing. It was, it was actually pretty good less water next time because there is like a puddle of water in the bottom but you need the water to cook i guess but it doesn't thicken up so anyway so it's now uh what time is it it's uh it's nine o'clock so we've been here i don't think anybody else will be coming into the uh campsite but uh evan here just uh What's up, guys he just walked in about uh 7 30 or something like that and he was contemplating going to uh 
Four point. Four point, but tell everybody how far you walked today. So I did uh, 27.8 kilometers today, came up over Cataract Pass through Cataract Creek, uh, started in Pinto Lake, and this is day 27 for me on the Great Divide Trail. Yeah, so, so Evan is the uh, fourth uh, through hiker that I've come across just in the last couple of weeks. We've been hanging out in this area for a couple of weeks, so naturally people doing the through hike are, are coming through. So where are you off to tomorrow? So tomorrow I'm going to Jonah's Shoulder, and then beyond that I'm going to do the Six Pass Alternate, uh, up taking to the north end of Moline Lake in Jasper. Yeah. So. so and you're on social media as well. So what are you I what am. are you building? Are you a, a vlog or website? What is it? Uh, I'd say right now it's more of a blog than a vlog, but uh, trying to build the brand. It just launched a month ago called Shit Wild. So Shit Wild. Shitwild.com is our main website. We're on uh, Instagram at shitwildofl. And on Facebook as well, just shit wild. Shit wild. Okay, yeah. well, oh, uh, I got the logo here. He, well, all right, flash the logo. Right but there. That's the logo. Hang on one second. Okay, that's the logo. But uh, so when I post this video, this video will be uh, about a two-parter, three-parter. But uh, in 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 this section of the video, his website will be uh, uh, on the link below. So cool. Good luck on the uh, rest of your trip, man. Thank you. Absolutely. We didn't think we'd have a fire tonight, but. We got a nice fire. We got a buddy with us. How's it going, guys? So it's a good night. And actually, the only disappointment, the only disappointment is we didn't see the uh, shooting stars last night, and I don't think we're going to see them tonight either. Oh well, next year. All right. Well, that was another really excellent day. Uh, another late night, 11:25, but we were sitting around the fire and. Uh, Having a good old time, Eric and I, and then uh, around 6.30 after we got into camp, uh, uh, another GDT through hiker uh, named Evan pulled up and he could smell our fire, he said, you know, he had a long day. He came in from Pinto Lake and then went over Cataract and came all the way to here. So that's, that's a very long day. And um, he said for the last few kilometers or whatever you can smell our uh, fire so um, uh, as a through hiker they don't typically have a lot of campfires a lot of them just end up coming to camp late you know they put in 20 to 30 to 35 kilometer days so at the end of the day they just come into camp and eat uh, um, boil some water and eat their powdered dehydrated meals and then go to bed but he sure enjoyed uh, hanging around the fire, and we enjoyed his company. So we're just telling good stories. He's uh, he's from Edmonton. So, um, anyways, uh, another great day. And uh, tomorrow is a mere 11 kilometers. So I'll uh, we'll get up early. Uh, we should knock that off in well under three hours. And then 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 the fun part is hitchhiking to Sunwapta. And um, and then driving home. And then we'll have one day at home. All right, so good night, everyone.